Um, another aspect that this last bullet at the bottom is trying to describe is um, when you have, uh, for example, paired electrons in orbitals around an atom, you can have upspin and downspin, kind of like is described in quantum physics. But really what's happening is you have classical spin, classical precession, and those precessing magnetic dipoles radiate away electromagnetic waves in which, uh, because of the way they're polarized with respect to each other, the electric fields end up being equal and opposite. However, the magnetic fields are the same polarity, so they add. So you end up with like an AC signal that's purely magnetic. And again, that's hard to show. It's hard to explain just words. It's something I need uh, animations to explain. Uh, there's some diagrams in the book uh, that was out eight years ago before the DOD asked me to keep quiet. Uh, but I don't have anything now. And just for the record, the DOD didn't say they wanted me to stay quiet because they want this technology to be quiet. The official uh, direction from the DOD is they don't want the public to know my name and start calling me up and asking me about classified projects I work on, even though this was unrelated to what I was working on and I got permission from my defense contractor to publish this information. They had their experts look at it and they didn't understand what I was talking about. So they said, sure, go ahead and publish your research papers. And then later the DOD didn't care that I had that permission. They just said, well, we don't want anyone to know who you are and be talking to you. Okay, it got off subject there. Anyway, you can pause this and read these uh, slides, uh, absorb it a little more. This is kind of a two-dimensional representa representation of a spin wave, and this is a representation of uh, uncompensated spins like you'd have in a magnetic material. But most of this technology advancement that's possible that I'm trying to describe is something having to do with spin waves among paired uh, electrons, for example, or compensated spins, you can't easily measure it. And according to Occam's razor, you're supposed to just forget that it exists. But in fact, it is still there. And there are spin waves uh, capable of propagating out uh, throughout the whole universe, creating this sea of standing waves, even though it's not easily detected. According to the classical model, of how things should interact, there should be uh, the sea of standing waves and not perfect harmony within those standing waves, so you'll have ripples of spin waves, of variations all, all the time going out through uh, these uh, paired radiations <coughs> in which you end up with just ripples of uh, high, very high frequency uh, magnetic field changes without an accompanied electric field component. And it, it's kind of obscure in these slides, but you end up, when you're radiating out from centers of mass from these pairs of waves, it ends up making a very slight attractive force towards centers of convergence of, of matter. In other words, I'm making another conjecture that what we call gravity is in fact the result of the attractive force from these waves of very high frequency uh, magnetic waves radiating out from mass that all tends to synchronize with each other. There's two basic forms of motion all electrically charged particles. Most of our technology technology today is based on uh, rectilinear motion of charged particles. And so basically what I'm saying is even 
whether it's an uncompensated spin or comp compensated spin, you can still develop technology that utilizes changing spin axis orientations and the electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves radiated out to and from them uh, and, and base technology on manipulating that to do lots of cool stuff. Signal processing is one thing. Communications is another. I just skip to the last bullet. Communications of the future may use spread spectrum spin wave receivers and transmitters. And again, I'm talking about not just radiation from uncompensated spins, but in other words, uh, spin wave ripples that spread out among the otherwise more in harmony or more in sync uh, sea of standing waves. You've got standing waves, three-dimensional standing waves throughout the universe that's already there. And then you cause kind of a ripple among those where they temporarily shift phase and then go back in phase again. And that's what a spin wave is, is a temporary change in the phase of motion. Um, this is describing how this can be used for power generation. And in fact, that's how my seven years of research on all this started, is uh, studying devices that uh, output electrical energy from no apparent source. And then in the process of trying to figure out, well, what is the source? That's how I came up with all this other stuff. And this is just one device I theorized should work as just another typical quote free energy electromagnetic device i started building it and i never finished uh, because uh, the legal department at my company made sure i understood that if it worked it would be their property even if i built it on my own time so i never finished the thing i prefer just to publish information about it since they gave me permission to do that and this is a uh, example of a propulsion system. That and the previous slide are both based on the same kind of idea where at very high frequency, Lenz's law doesn't apply the same anymore. If you, if you have an EMF, it goes out and reflects off something that's due to the induced current flow that induced current flow causes a counter EMF and once it gets back to the source that caused it, normally according to Lenz's law, it would uh, provide a counter force and that's how in energy gets converted in motors and things like that, generators from the force applied to electrical energy output. But if you have very, very high frequency feedback, it ends up coming back and applying a force that reinforces the initial signal rather than counteracting it and that in fact should cause uh, the the subatomic particles that make up that system to start shifting in their spin uh, so they're slightly out of sync with the sea of standing waves and it's that out of sync condition that allows these uh, electromagnetic devices to start uh, producing electrical energy from no apparent uh, source. So shifting all the magnetic spins, also the more you shift them out of phase with like all the synced up spins radiating from the earth, makes them less and less susceptible to the gravitational pull that those spins are causing. So either you can shift phase and like if you've got 180 degrees out of phase, it'd cause a push instead of a pull. Or you can just shift to totally different frequency, in which case uh, you don't feel any push or pull from gravity because you're not in sync with it or 180 out of sync with it anymore. 